you may not know, but everyone here at the station knows, everyone that follows A2D knows, I am like one of the biggest Brian Westbrook fans there is. I actually, I, my son's middle name is Westbrook. So like, <laughs> I've been a fan of him since he was at Villanova. Um, that only increased when he got drafted by the Eagles. But I was a young, I was a young fan then. I wasn't as as immersed in the game as I am now. Um, so I was always looking for stuff about Westbrook content, articles to to help me to help help my arguments whenever I get into debates with my friends about hey, this Westbrook is the real deal. I'm telling you. And I remember scrolling through through uh, through Google or whatever it was back then, um, and I found this article, Gut Check Volume 1, Ryan Westbrook. And it was this detailed, detailed article about Westbrook, how he his value as a third-round pick and his talent could exceed that value. And I read the whole thing. I was so enamored. And it was written by, by you, Mr. Wet, Matt Waldman. So if you could take us back a little bit, back to – not a little bit, a lot, a, a lot of bit. Back in 2004, <laughs> like what – what do you remember about writing that article? Um, you know, why did you decide to, to make it about Brian Westbrook? And knowing what you know now and, and what you wrote about him before, you know, did he become everything you projected him to be? It was the first fantasy article I ever wrote. It was, and so it was because back then I thought I, you know, this was well before the internet really started to pop off. It was about maybe three or four years before everyone was getting easy access to the internet. It was in that in-between time between 96 and about yes. 2006, you know? Yeah. So, so fantasy football information and even football information wasn't like it was in pockets on the internet, but I was trying to develop a mock draft site and with somebody who had some technical experience that I didn't have. And I thought, well, I'll write some content because I'd done a lot of freelance work and, and, um, as a writer and then eventually became an editor at the university of Georgia. But I, I thought I'd start the site. And so I started writing content for it and I called it the gut check. And I had written three articles. I think it was on Brian Westbrook, Larry Fitzgerald, Brandon Lloyd, I think maybe Frank Gore. Those were like guys that I had pinpointed that guys that I really liked. Yeah, four wasn't bad. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and if, and if you ask me, if you want to take like a slam dunk, version of like what wide receivers could have as a slam dunk invitational which would be like the acrobatic catch and make it a, a pro bowl yeah. event you would you could call it the brandon lloyd the invitational yes. and still probably get away with it you know just in the same way you could probably say jr Ryder, um mm -hmm. you, you know could dunk maybe he wasn't an unbelievable player but so anyway i i got interested in writing doing more about the draft because i was listening to you know, not a great name in the news right now, but I was reading Gil Brandt's, you know, mock draft and talk. And he was talking about how if Brian Westbrook were 10 pounds heavier and about two inches taller. He'd be a top five overall pick in the draft. And, you know, someone who was an operations manager back in the day for while that was going on. And this was a sideline. I was reading this during lunch and I thought, I know why that is. It has nothing to do with his height. It has nothing to do with his weight. I mean, it has nothing to do with his ability. It has to do with the resume bullet points, small school, undersized, underweight, two injuries, you know, then you know his story at FSU and how they they rescinded their scholarship and both injuries, you know, one was on playing on black ice, slipping on black ice, playing basketball, you know, and so all these things that you put together and you realize that it was the draft capital is about risk management as much, if not more than talent. So I wanted to take the angle from talent because all these other things, you're playing the telephone game with people or you're asking agents, you're asking, um, you know, scouts who are all feeding misinformation at this time of year. So why just, why not just focus on that? So I started writing about, about Westbrook because what I saw from him, I thought that he had that opportunity to be um, a special player. And while, I would have liked to have seen him get the opportunity maybe to get more touches as a runner um, throughout his career. What can you really complain about to be a multiple Pro Bowl player right. who was able to do the things he did? He was he was in the same era as Marshall Falk. And if you wanted to say who were the two best receiving backs during that era, they were one, two. 
And and then at the end of his career, when he ended up playing a little bit in San Francisco, you could see when they needed a guy to just carry the ball, and they didn't, ha- and they had injuries, and they had to use him. You could see how savvy of an inside runner he really was, um, even at that late stage of his career. I mean, to to me, I think he's if someone you know the Hall of Famer, maybe the Hall of Very Good, but I, he's more than very good. Um, yeah. So I'm. You know, for me, that was that's a fond memory because whenever I think of Brian Westbrook, I think of that's what inspired me to do all the work I'm doing now. 